Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 87. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. Hey, Daniel. How are you? I'm okay. How many cups of ca- com- How many cups of coffee have you got? Remember, Dan, this is live. Yeah, I need to sleep. Sleep is for the weak like me. True. I just had one now. Drinking right now. Okay. Mmm, yummy. So, Dan, how are you? How has your day been? My day? Mm-hmm. Not very good. Oh, my. Ooh. Care to share it with us? Yeah, iPad stand broke. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't oh. watch bathroom TV anymore. Oh, mm. uh, I hope you get that fixed. <laughs> I'm not intending to. I'm intending to get the iPad fixed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Hmm, okay. So, anyway. It's not even my iPad. That's the best part. Oh, my. So, anyway, let's move on to another person. Uh, I want to go to James, but Kitsune has an interesting story about iPads. So, James, you don't mind? I mind. Okay. All of a sudden, I'm relegated to the last place in the... In the, in the uh, you don't like me anymore. I'm no, leaving. James, Goodbye. James, James. No, no, James. No, you're going, you, you're no. going in terms of geographical distance <laughs> from the host. No, no, James. You know what they say about uh, saving the best for last? That's uh, that's what they say to the one that's the worst. No, 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 no. I put it this way. Nice guys finish last. I'm an... That's not a word. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, let's go for James. Uh, uh, no, no, Norman, Norman, Norman. Norman, yeah? Norman, seriously now, you, you, you're the host of the show. You select whoever goes first on your own criteria. Don't worry. Okay, that was James Cork because we talk over each other. <laughs> so, James, how was your day? How was your day? Well, my day started fairly okay. Then I wanted to punch people in the face until they turn into red. And they form shapes of blood and bones. And then oh. I feel better now because I'm chatting with you guys. So, so you want to give good. them a high-definition smile? <laughs> yes. I want to give them my smile, HD. Oh, God. I hated that video. Oh, give James Corgan internet hugs. I think I cannot need them. I'm not an appeal. Anyway, moving on to our next person is Kitsune Risu. Hello. Hello. Oh my. So Kitsune, how are you? I'm I'm okay, sorry. That that was a rough start right there, but don't worry, we'll smoothen it out and get right back into it. A rough Isn't start that right, starts. James? Interesting story before the show record uh, started to record. You say you stole an iPad? <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure why you're like actually believing me because I say a lot of stuff and I've been saying a lot of stuff ever since I came on your show. Um, I think like pretty much you don't have to believe 99% of the things that I say. Oh, so you're not a fanfic writer or filmfic then? Oh, no, no, that, that's the 1% that's true. <laughs> No, it was just interesting because Dan talk about iPads, you talk about iPads, I talk about iPads. So it, it was pretty interesting to me. Well, okay, I, I stole an iPad, but not from, uh, you know, Back not from... I stole, I stole it from my mom. <laughs> okay, that's even Which worse. Which probably doesn't make it better, it's pro- more, you know, morally gray. You can't but, uh, beat me, though. I just broke how my can be, iPad. How, how can we compare you stealing your morally gray? I, she wasn't using it. <laughs> People in chat, say what? boo. Say boo to Kitsu. Just say boo, please. Boo. I want to see that. No, 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 it, it was it, basically all my mom does is like take it out once a week to play uh, uh, Candy Crusher or something. <laughs> you mean she doesn't even check her emails on it? No, she has a computer. And, and here's the thing. She didn't buy it either. She won it free <laughs> in uh, a contest, right? Uh, we had this local uh, thing going on at a DVD uh, rental shop. Mm-hmm. And my mom watches like every single movie ever made ever. And that gave her a lot of chances. And she actually won. So it, she got like that free, the free iPad and she never used it. So basically, this is not theft as much <laughs> as it is... The you know reacquisitioning of resources. Okay, but still, bad on you, man. Bad on you. What? No, I mean, what? Bad on him, dude. He's doing what? something good bad for a change. Yeah. She knows I took it. It's not a secret. <laughs> that's, not, that's not stealing. If she knows. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, what? What's way to warn it? That's not stealing. <laughs> that is not stealing. No, 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 guys. There's the a difference monarchy. between asking someone whether they can use it or like, mom, I'm using your iPad. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. You see, that's that's what happened. I just walked in one day. I was like, "Mom, where's your iPad?" And she's like, "It's in the drawer." And I said, "I'm taking it." And I, I left. I'm not sure why I'm actually 
trying to convince you guys that I did steal something. <laughs> okay, anyway, it was just for fun, man. It was just for fun. That's uh, what happened. <laughs> no, but that's good. I finally met someone who just doesn't like to see things lying around and not being used. <laughs> yeah, that kind of annoyed me. So now, now I play games on it, and it's. Oh dear, sorry. Oh, there, See, that was there, there he goes again, playing the games on the iPad. <laughs> Not every ringtone's an iPad, okay? <laughs> no, that was that just happened to actually be the iPad. <laughs> am I the only guy? Am I the only guy in the call who uses Android? No, I'm I know. An an Android Android. I, 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 I actually have an Android phone. I, I prefer Android much uh, above any i device. I don't even know what I'm doing with my iPad most of the time. Uh, I just, I just didn't like it sitting in the drawer gathering dust. So I just took it. That's, that's the only reason why I have it, and I okay, don't use okay. it for anything except playing uh, games. My Little Pony, I guess. <laughs> Okay. An angrier, an angrier person like me five minutes ago would have said, "That's not a word." Apple, but personally, I Apple is not made for me. I am not made for Apple. Oh no, no, no! That's not a word. It's, Apple. it's incompatible. I don't like, I don't like Apple. I just Apple's not uh, compatible with anything. It's like that's not a word. Like it's the only the Apple device that I like is Applejack. Nothing else. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't call. It. <laughs> Now, you know what's Where an Apple that? jack? It's, the, it's that little plug at the end of the earbuds. It's a jack, so it's made by Apple. <laughs> she, she's the eye. She's the eye hat. <laughs> well, you know what? Sweetie going to have a field day on this episode. <laughs> but like, you know, the only, only reason I'm using an iPad is because my Android tablet's under repair. <laughs> yeah, uh, say what, what you want about you Android tablets. <laughs> what Android tablet do you have? I have an Asus Pad phone. Ah, that's a good one. Now the phone got damaged, so the whole thing has to go in for repair. That's the bad part of it. Ah, oh, that's that's better here. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is housekeeping. This is going to be redundant, but you know what? I'm all about redundancy. Oh no! Oh really? Se- now? Indeed. Oh no! Redundant se- department of redundancy. <laughs> all right then. You like redundancy? Hello and welcome to the MBS show. Hush. Anyway, um, November 2nd, I'll be playing games for 25 hours in Extra Life 2013. Um, okay, you need to you need to rephrase that. On November second, I was playing games for twenty five hours. I know. You know what? I, I'm just gonna throw the script away. Um, we can. I'm script thrown. Please, guys. Um, after this show, I'll be playing games for twenty five hours with Kitsu. We we be playing for our first time. Uh, no more room in hell. That's gonna be fun. And then after that, we'll have a special recorded interview with the voice actors for Swedish Spitfire and Ali Heed. And if we're lucky, maybe you get to see me play Portal and Sketchy Sound will dub the whole thing <laughs> as GLaDOS. So that's going to be fun. And I may be playing Portal 2 with Lionheart Cartoon from Duo Cartoonist. He's the guy that did Thrones of the Night. So that'd be fun. He's a really smart guy. He's a really smart guy. Um, links to the donation page can be found in the show notes or in the chat in well, in the chats, um, with whichever chat you go, uh, my chat or James' chat, it'll be there, it'll be there. So, moving on to the next topic, news time. So, news time is pretty slow because nothing much. Talking about video games, Team Fortress 2 have unicorn hats now. So, if you haven't noticed, Head Fortress 2 recently added unicorn hats. The popular free-to-play shooter Team Fortress 2 recently added unicorn hats to their library of hats. The hats can be purchased in game for two dollars and forty nine cents. Just say two fifty. Why don't you? Upon wearing the hat, the character will have a special line related to the hat. Could this be a MLP reference? Who knows? But the words "friendship is magic" has been uttered a few times. Links can be found in the show notes. So, who here plays Team Fortress? I do. Okay, Kisuk, do you play? Used to. Oh, James, do you? No, no, I never. Okay, this is my ex, this is my experience with Team Fortress Two. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, okay, I'm gonna play the game. Uh, get killed. Okay, <laughs> respawn, get killed. Respawn, get killed. Respawn, get killed. Re- get killed. That's, that's kill. every game. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Team Fortress okay, Two. Stop. Yep. <laughs> the- uh, yeah, you see, that's it. I don't like to play a game where I have to die fifteen thousand times. That, to that's get every up game and kill in somebody. the world. Not part no, of. No, that's not every game now. in the world. That's not every game in the world. That's every. That's not a word. Game in the world. I don't want to play Team Fortress Two, and <laughs> I don't want to play it now that it's free for play. I don't want to play that. I don't <laughs> want to play that game. It's again, it's not made for me. I didn't. It reminded me way too much of Call of Duty Four. And I That's not a word. Hated Call of Duty. 4. <laughs> you and everybody else. The lines for this they were pretty funny because 
background if you know some of the characters like the heavy the spy the the characters they they had funny lines like even the guy with the rocket launcher the soldier and yeah, the soldier it's like I, if i remember it's i don't know what i've been told but i'm a pretty unicorn or something like that that doesn't rhyme i don't know it's just did you hear no, that the guys that on the... I, I saw this in Darpy Buru this morning. Did you hear regarding um, the new hat that you mm. guys are talking about? Mm-hmm. There, there, are, there is a group of guys in the TF2 forums. They are called the Unicorn Removal Group. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I they, yeah, I've noticed yeah. that as well. I read the forums when they came out. There's a group that says RIP Team Fortress 2006-2013. Yes, they they are like, oh god, they are catering into the brownies. This is terrible. This sucks. We're going to take it down. And and it's well, the, if you the go the there, you have to be careful. I mean, you, you have to be careful because back. it's full of caustic comments and uh, lots of homophobia. So be careful. I mean, Team Fortress Two is the only game when you can fire a rocket launcher into someone's face at point blank and not hurt them. L- look, is give Newell is a brownie and g- give Newell is a brownie. If you is not going to take down the, the unicorn hat. Anyway, let's let's be honest about this. This actually started a long time before um, this hat. It, the first reference, I believe, was uh, nearly a year ago for last Halloween when they actually gave... Uh, Pyrovision. No, not Pyrovision. It, no, Pyrovision heavy, is not... Uh, yeah. The heavy had, had a costume of a fairy. And when he put it on, one of his lines changed to something like... Uh, Friendship is something magic. So there was yeah, already, said, yeah, you know, a reference said, a year ago. He, he said, he said, friendship is magic, stupid. <laughs> yeah, friendship is some, yeah, something, so, it was something like that. But uh, you know, it, this is not the first time that pony stuff has appeared in in Team Fortress Two, and people are going crazy just because of a new hat that you don't have to wear. You know, if you don't like it, don't bloody wear it. But the other thing is um, that group. That steam group that says whatever bad thing they just said is kind of silly because you have to buy the hat if you want it. It's like two dollars and fifty cents to buy the hat. Like, dude, you have to spend money to get the hat. And I'm sure that if you're a homophobe or a person that not, does not like bronies, your group of people in your room will not wear it. But you see, they, they hate it because it's there. It's not that they have to buy it or they are forced to buy it. They are not forced to buy it, but it's there. And just because it's there, they hate it. It's like these people are newcomers or something. I mean, in general, all brony haters are like that. It's just like the show is there. Don't watch it if you don't want to. The thing is, Halo 4, recently there's somebody took a picture of... No, not really took a picture, but somebody made Fluttershy, Best Pony, in Halo 4. Yes. And people were... Good morning! about it and yes. dude are you going to stop playing Halo 4 if I'm not mistaken Halo 4 is the best game in the world for you people like that the Halo 4 Facebook posted the picture appreciating the artistry that went behind making a picture of a pony with uh, we, with the Forge feature of Halo can you get the picture Norman for everyone to see it oh I've my, seen it it's been a while one. it's been a while the one where to... they made it out of all matte materials or something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes that's the one that is the one and they posted it on their Facebook, and people were complaining because they posted it on their Facebook. People complaining as this, this, this stupidest thing. Why? People are so silly. I can't remember what was the who the guys that developed. Uh, was it Bioshock or something? Bioware. Bioware, yeah. They they also got some heat when they put uh, Pinkie Pie and this is this is my favorite party in the Citadel, and everybody started flipping around about it. Uh, oh yeah, they actually had to take. They actually took it down. That but no, that's just the. Uh... Now you yeah, can say yeah. things are dumb, but these people exist. I know, but it's... Uh, me no likey. Well, the, the good thing about you is you say me no likey and you're not saying anything like... You're not doing what they're doing. That's a good thing. You know, if you're... you, They're the types that say me no likey and they tell the world, Hey, me no likey. You shouldn't likey too. And that's what they're doing to the world. Oh, yeah, true. You know what? They can do whatever the hell they want. They are not interfering with me. I just find it really, really intriguing. People like that really, really mystifies me because it's like, don't you have anything else to do with your life? Don't you, don't you have anything better to do? Are you really going to spend hours bitching and moaning about something that nobody cares for except for those that I aim for? Yeah, true. But it's, 
you know, people have their opinions and stuff, but let's just say this. You are entitled your opinion, no matter yes. how wrong they are. So anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking this next topic is going to be a cheerful one. Dan, take this one. Ah, uh, really? You say cheerful, I think it's suspicious, but let's get this Chrome thing running. Uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody's having trouble. So, Pony plush available on eBay. Yeah, I love eBay. And if you're having a hard time looking for pony plushes with good-looking manes and not like mop material, a seller on eBay has started selling rather good ponies. So if you try and take a look at eBay, they're 12 inches in size. And by the looks of it, they are pretty much factory-made. Could these plushies have fallen off the back of a truck in China? So they have Princess Twilight Sparkle, Applejack Pinkie Pie, Luna and Derpy Hooves. And all the links are in the show notes. So go and check it out. What do you all think of this? This looks pretty cute. Applejack har- has her hat. Yeah, true. That's a really good thing. That's already a plus. The thing with this plush here is, um, I have a theory. And the theory is, this could be the plush that Osaka Jack was talking about. Are you sure? I thought that the Osaka Jack plushies were those that uh, those crane machine plushies. No, this was um, for the Tokyo Toy Show. Way back when, when they were promoting My Little Pony for the anime and stuff, they were selling or they were promoting the toys. And the toys were, some of them were plushes. Um, they had the mop hair and they had this. If you look at the picture, there's a tag and the tag is in Japanese. Can someone get me a photo of that thing? I'll have a look at that. It's in the show notes. Go click on the... Click on the well, no, I've been, I've been looking all over the place. Let's see, where are we... Okay, wait, okay, which one Which one has a clearer picture? All of them, really? They all do. All of them? Yeah, I'll just... No, I'm going to look at Applejack, because Applejack's the best. That's a funny way of saying Fluttershy. Applejack's the best. I just came back from Japan, uh, just uh, last week. And uh, I was mainly hanging around Tokyo. Obviously, I don't really know, like, you know, the, the places to go and all that stuff. But I didn't see that much... Um, you know, my little stuff. And I actually went to one of the stores, uh, which was in the refurbished Tokyo station, where they have shops, um, which sell stuff from TV networks. So this is a kind of an interesting thing in Japan, where they actually have stores that are run by television networks or television stations. Okay. And they sell all the stuff that, you know, are related to the shows that they sell. So I, I went into the one that, you know, carries um, MLP in in Japan, and it was a, a tiny, 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 tiny little uh, section. Um, and then I went to all the famous toy stores in Japan as well. Um, you know, like Kitty Land and everything, uh, even down Ginza, and their sections were also really quite tiny. In fact, I have a picture of it. I can upload it in a second if you give me a well, moment. Well, remember that. Remember that MLP just arrived in sure Japan. Only now they are receiving episodes from season two. I think they are in like uh, yeah, but are they one in the season of episode it, usually of... Japan, right? Has never really waited on anything to start with incredible amounts of merchandising. They are crazy with merchandising, and anyone who knows Japan would know this very well. And the surprising thing about MLP is that I did expect more stuff. But it was a lot of stuff that they actually imported from the U.S., you know, nothing that they did themselves. And I'm thinking part of this is probably because they don't have the license to actually make merchandise. Uh, But, you know, things like this uh, stuffed toys and everything that that comes out, if they actually did manage to get the license for that, I definitely didn't see it in the larger, you know, and more popular toy stores in Japan, like the, you know, the the toy stores to go. Um, I'm going to actually put a link in the thing right now. This is actually that store, and you can actually see how huge the MLP section was. It's a bunch of stuff and stickers surrounded by Naruto stuff. So that's that's really good for them. I'm, I'm going to post it to the uh, live stream chat as well. Oh my, that's small. Right, that everybody should small. get the image or link. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing. Well, it's absolutely nothing. Oh, wow, that is really, really nothing. And now they have the stickers and some notebooks. That's nice and fun sized. Now this is this is from the official uh, network store. So I thought I would have you know I wasn't expecting much, oh. but I went to two of the bigger toy stores in Japan. One was in Ginza, and the other one was in um, Harajuku. Uh, huge, huge toy stores, and also their sections were really tiny. They were selling the Crystal Empire set of ponies, but. 
other than like just one stand of stuff, there wasn't really that much else. So I was actually wondering if it actually was, you know, catching on in Japan at all. It is, it is, because um, we recently talked to Sakura Chita. He's one of the few Japanese bronies that speak good English. And we, from what we talked to him, he said that uh, merchandising not that was hot, not that right? well known yet. But it's going there, yeah. It's, yeah, I'm, it's I'm not that hard, but it's going there slowly. Yeah. Um, recently, Osaka Jack took a picture, and the All picture right. was imported yeah. America. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I saw. So, I mean, mm. um, but no, um, honestly speaking, mm. I'm hoping I'm hoping they get you know allowance <laughs> because I I just think like the main problem or I wouldn't say the problem, but the main issue or boundary or whatever. Uh, with it is just basically the licensing. Hasbro wants all the money. The the way they make their money is through the toys. So if, if Japan suddenly starts making uh toys themselves and you know, I'm sorry to say this, but you know Japan's gonna make superior toys in every way. Quality uh you know but, features, you know, what it can do. They probably can transform <laughs> into cars or something. I don't know. But <laughs> Oh my god, they want they want money? How dare they? Yeah. So that's that's the thing that that's why they're not gonna let Japan you know, make their own stuff, and that's why we're not going to see really good My Little Pony merchandise from Japan. We're just going to have. You didn't know it. that. Maybe they, you didn't know that yet. You didn't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm hoping it's not going to happen. Well, it's speculation, and I can it's, see. It's, this is all speculation, talking. of course. This is all yeah, but that's the thing: is that with speculation, you can speculate anything. You have to be careful what you speculate about. Maybe you're going to be wrong. Perhaps they are in the talks about that. About that. Well, well, if if I'm wrong, I welcome that. I mean, I say I say a lot of stuff that has you know has been wrong, but for a benefit, you know. But speculation is as what it was. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm putting it out there right now that this is what I think, but it's definitely may not be the truth. It's something to think about, though, right? True, but no. Another thing is, it's going to be like this. Um, Hasbro are just selling the license out there selling it, what, 10k or maybe more a piece for a license. So whenever Tesbro sells a license, they don't earn anything back. So the shirts that we get from We Love Fine or Hot Topic or whatever else, Tesbro don't see any cent coming back. Whatever they get in the beginning is just it. A good analogy is like this. A person who sells a blank book to a writer, the writer writes a story and sells that story to a friend. And that story, he may, he may get 100 bucks out of that story. And the bookseller, only uh, 5 bucks maybe. That's about it. So it's kind of like that, really. Well, I kind of want to actually address some of the things that are being said in the uh, chats right now. Jewel Eater Dragon says, hey, guys. Okay, so that's actually not at all relevant. So I'm actually going to go to... <clears throat> James's uh, stream, okay. which actually has people talking about relevant things. Thank you, James, for having a cool fan base. Hi, I have All a fan right, base. So, sorry, so, no, Asians nobody just told me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we do. No, no, give 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 me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second, guys. MBS people, Malaysian people, come on! Uh, you are in the Twitch TV chat. Hype it up, man! Hype it up! I'm from I'm from Singapore, so I don't really care for you guys. But yeah, hype it up, <laughs> man! Right, don't bother. I was from across the causeway. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Don't anyway, bother, I, man. Save address, yourself. I'm don't dumb yourself down to our Ask level. Questions talk. Malaysia, Ask the question Portugal, Malaysia. 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 Mythos. Mythos. You can blame James. He went and invaded us and gave us so much trouble. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, ancestors, you're right, no, 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 <laughs> but, but for, for reals now, for reals now, uh, Mythos uh, is actually just saying something like, uh, why can't Hasbro just work right. with them and make all the monies, right? Um, and I suppose, yeah, it does seem like it's better business sense, but the thing is that international deals usually are pretty tricky things. Like, if anyone's ever worked in business before, and I have... Mm. Um, it's not that simple to just like do that, and you've got you've got the problem with the money as well. Also, Hasbro definitely wants to monopolize the fact that they are the only ones to sell toys. It's their only revenue stream right now for yeah, Hasbro, uh, the entire Hasbro franchise. Hasbro doesn't do any. Hasbro doesn't do what you're saying is completely correct. Hasbro doesn't do anything from the TV show. They, they don't make anything from the network. Let's let's face it. They are not making anything yeah. of BDs or books. The comics are making money, but. A lot of the money goes to the publishers. 
of the comics. Oh yeah, that's the book industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. So all mm-hmm. they have left is mm-hmm. the one thing that they've been running on for the past fifty years, which is uh, the toys. You know, all your uh, all your yeah. little he, um, you know mask and that's why I, I have so many He Man or whatever. But you know, all, all of their licenses is basically toys and the board games, really. True. And the thing about Japan is, uh, we all know that Hasbro uh, has the rights to produce Transformers, right? Yes. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. So in Japan, it's not that. In Japan, Takara Tomi owns the right to produce Transformer toys. Oh, and they are so much one of those like special edition Japanese Transformers toys that it's like made out of actual metal. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a properly well done thing. And I kid you not, like the first time I took it out of the box, I was like, I'm yeah, I'm gonna transform this. That's not a word. Right. And like you know, they have like difficulty ratings on the boxes for the American ones. And I've always played with Transformers when I was young. Like difficulty max like it it's like eight or nine transformer hits and it's nothing and this japanese one the difficulty rating was like they they didn't even give a rating they just said you're gonna die (laughs) and (laughs) yes i i tried that out it took me three hours i'm I'm not even making that up it took me three hours to transform the thing yeah the transformers are like rubik's (laughs) cubes it's it was crazy but it's amazing in the sense that you know, it's it's so well articulated. Like everything can move. You can you, you can turn the steering wheel in the car, and the freaking wheels will actually move. Oh, Ooh, wow! Yeah, it's that. It's that all, and it cost me like a hundred and fifty bucks. So this is this is the quality of stuff that Japan does. If Japan starts making NLP toys, Hasbro's gonna have major competition. Somebody in my side of the chat, uh, Julie the Dragon, he mentions this. Actually, Hasbro sells Magic the Gathering cards, selling, seeing they bought the rights to rights from Wizard of the Coast. So th- the thing is about that is they bought Wizard of the Coast. They own Magic in a sense. Now, Wait, did, did Hasbro actually buy Wizards? Yeah, they bought Wizards. No, no they own. Yeah. They own. Yeah, they own Wiz- Wizards of the Coast. So basically, yeah. it's like this. Oh, it's if like, they, yeah, if they own Wizards of the Coast, that means all the money, you know, the revenue stream. Oh, well, Jewel saying they don't. No, they don't. But they don't it's basically it. like this. It's how Disney owned Marvel, in a sense, like that. So now Hasbro says, Wizard, you do whatever you're doing because you're earning, you're getting money. So do that. We'll just leech off you. Done. We're happy. Well, it's, a, it's, it's a bit different, apparently. I mean, if if, uh, if Jewel Eater is right, and, and, and um, uh, he or she, I'm sorry, but um, if Jewel's saying that they don't actually own Wizards of the Coast and they only have a distribution license. That's a little bit different than, like, you know, Disney actually owning Marvel because Disney actually bought Marvel. Everything Marvel does, it's Disney money. But if it's just a distribution uh, license, it's not, um, you know, it's not Hasbro money. It's just they, they get, they skim off the top whenever they make a sale under their, you know, under their cop under their company's um, spread. They're, they're, they're basically just using the resources of Hasbro uh, to spread their product. Oh, okay. Julie, Jul- I-, I remember who is he now. Okay. Sorry, it took me a while. I, I derp. He is another fan fiction writer. You should go read his stuff. It's really nice and it's really awesome. But okay. Um, he- I'll, he- I'll hit him up. Sure. Yeah, I work in a comic shop. I know I had to order them myself. Well, it's li- licensing is a hard topic to talk about because we don't have a lawyer at hand. So yeah, yes, I, I remember. <laughs> but I think the um, world would be a not only place just a lawyer. You licensing. need an international lawyer. Mm, true as that, well. true that. But anyway, um, I mean, like it's it's killing the art of the whole thing. And as much as you know, yeah, these companies need to make money and all that kind of things. There's so much creativity that is really crushed by licensing and things that you just can't do. Mm, true. Yeah, I can. Can I just state for a point that business and artistry has never ever gone hand in hand. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's what happens. Sometimes something that is artistic and beautiful is not going to sell very well. That's it's why like, we you know have even all art house cinema. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even in like uh, you know, in proper businesses, that's why like you know, the executives and the marketing departments and the engineers never get along. Mm. The departments alone because one guy is like, "Oh, you know, it has to be functional and beautiful and work." And the other guy is like, "No, it has to sell." You know, who cares about but then, if it's, if it's good or not, and this but, expands, you know, to to like everything else, I feel. But then you have you you have exceptions, but you have to, they are very like uh, with a with a lot of silver lining. 
like for example something pretty that didn't sell well is anything made by for example I'm talking about movies in particular it's easier mm-hmm. to see it that way something made made by Terrence Malick like Thin Red Line or The Tree of Life those movies are very those, those movies are gorgeous but they completely bombed in the box office despite being so smart and very well written and very well done well, the however you have a you have a have, movie that is really pretty, like Avatar, because the story is absolutely <laughs> stupid and everybody knows about it. And everybody knows how it's going to end and how it's going to go. But it looks so pretty and it made so much money. It's and not that's what that, people want. Really, I can feel you because I understand that. you got to understand the world is stupid and lazy <laughs> and they don't like to think when they're watching a show, which is like, why do you think these shows don't sell out? Because you got to think when you're watching them. The only show that made people kind of sort of think was Inception. Mm, true. Uh, you know, just because you know, the music was good, people bought it. Oh, the Inception, world, the world Inception is, is an action movie hidden uh, in a... No, I will, it's, it's a I will agree with you when you say that, that the world is lazy and stupid and they, and they don't want to think, but they have the potential to be smart and to think and to be intelligent. And the, the proof of that is the fact that we had a person called Dr. Seuss. Mm, true, true, true. Oh, yes. He, he's yeah, awesome. Dr. Seuss was the most create one, one of the most creative authors, artists, and writers in in history. And, and he and did. Not, he, it's not like everything he did was perfect, but he worked his best to make something creative, everlasting with a with a moral in it. And then the Hollywood machine took it and completely. That's f- not a word. You know? oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, I was about. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, do we have visions were entirely ruined for by the Hollywood for, machine? For for the Grinch stole Christmas, uh, the Cat in the Hat, Orton Hears Who, and the Lorax. Oh, you know what? I okay, the Lorax was terrible, but I did not really mind um, Grinch. Horton Hears the Who that much. I thought it was pretty okay. I, I it, was really hyped for Horton Hears the Who when I first watched it. Now that I, I rewatched it recently, it's not that good, but it's probably the least bad of the four. Mm. Yeah, it is the least bad of the four. Lorax was absolutely terrible. I don't yeah, know what Lorax is for. Lorax like is the music for. was bad. Like. Uh, everything about that was just like it. It didn't carry the Seuss level of wonderment that you get when you sort of read the books and you're like, "Oh, this is you know, this is interesting and cool." It, in fact, the the ironic thing probably is that the story of the Lorax was shadowed very, very, very clearly in what they were doing with the movie, which is basically you know selling out in corporate <laughs> machines just to make money. I mean, it's boring. true because. Hollywood wants to find the cheapest way to produce the Big Bang. That's and what in they, a sense, that's, like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and that's what they're they're doing more and more uh, of recently, especially with the uh, you know like reboots of movies. They don't even wait for a series to end before they're going. Oh, we're going to reboot the series. You know, especially like with uh, things like Batman. Oh yeah, uh, Spider Man. Mm, Spider Man. Yeah. So you know, Robert Downey Jr. commercialized people, the whole thing. <laughs> people, people did. I've read, I mean, I've read stuff like reports and, and things where people blame it on the fact that our society now has such a quick um, turnover period. Like in the past, we had to wait. You know, people didn't mind waiting one year for Back to the Future 2 to come out to finish the story of Back to the Future 1. But now people are like, okay, yeah, we're, we're entirely upset with this vision. No, we demand a new one immediately. You guys have the resources. Do it now. Or else okay. we're going to get bored and we're going to stop okay. giving money. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. But then we're talking about rebooting Spider-Man. We all agree that we can reboot Spider-Man and we can do it better. I dare you to tell me that um, Tobey Maguire is a much better Peter Parker than Andrew Garfield. No, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying that, that Peter you know, Parker faster, that's all. That performance <laughs> of, Peter pa- of Peter Parker in, in, in the first three Spider-Man movies is terrible. But Peter Parker always had the potential to be whiny. Tobey Maguire turned Peter Parker into a dweeb. Peter Parker is not a dweeb. He's a, he, he, can, he kind of be dweeby, but he's also funny and he's a smart. Most important of all, he's smart. Oh, yeah, he's a scientist. He is but uh, uh, Tobey Maguire is not smart. He's not sciencey. He looks like a dweeb. Andrew Garfield looks like an like a total nerd. That he can and be he smart, actually, and he actually does sign stuff in the show, yes. which is something that was missing from the original uh, trilogy, which basically just has Tobey Maguire looking depressed and jumping around. And that's that, that that Watson getting rescued every five minutes. What happens with the girl in the new movie? She's 
not only useful, but she's smarter than Peter Parker. I was so happy. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it's simple. You know, Hollywood ways of working right now is that a lot of things, as much as they seem original, they're not. Because when they found out the formula, hey, the reboot works. Let's do a trillion and one reboots. Doesn't work. Reboot. Doesn't work. Reboot. Doesn't work. Reboot. And it it's going to take a while before someone comes along and does a damn good job with a movie. And then everybody's going to say like, hey, they did this. We should do it too. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And it's, it just keeps <laughs> going like that. Yeah, exactly. Like Iron Man. I mean, I don't mind Iron Man. It's got good effects. And since I'm into effects, but heck, the story is predictable. Well, well anyway, he's, point. He's Iron Man, but that's not the point. He's not the... <laughs> uh, Tony Stark is perfect in that movie. I defy you to tell Wait, me that the, Tony Stark uh, the character of is Tony Stark perfect is in that movie. Good. Yes. Excuse me? Yes, he is. Tony Stark. Who, Do you, you know? Robert Downey Jr.? You, yeah, I mean... You mean you Robert at... Downey Jr.? Because Tony no, Stark mean... is actually Iron Man, and, you know, who else would it be? The character of Tony Stark, the way they portrayed him... Oh, the way, the way he flawless. played him. I mean, okay. Well, yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, my God, guys, don't be so bad. Don't be so, like... Knuckleheaded. I I really need to explain myself in that regard. God damn it! I'm sorry. Uh, I'm you know, not considering I don't know to, like half the stuff that you say most of the time. Uh, is, I'm not smart enough to interpret this fast enough. You know, you it's it's like it's, it's, it's like every time you say rarity is like a good point. I just don't understand. I just cannot understand. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, I th- I think we. Should- we should end it now. So that that was news time, and that was our opinion on said news. Oh boy, <laughs> when we talk about something, we really talk about something. So um, next topic is going to be AMA. So if you have any questions for us, ask them now. So I, I'm going to start off the thing with James. What are you drawing? Uh, uh, <laughs> is that your question? You could ask me whatever. Yeah. So he's trying to sharpen uh, his pencil, crack. No, crack, because crack. I'm waiting for people to ask, okay. ask the question because it's all of a sudden. And so, no, you can't put a Cintiq stylus <laughs> in the sharpener. That doesn't work. So, um, it, don't you, it, it don't you dare me. I have a sharpener though. here. I can sharpen this stylus. Um, I'm drawing one of the requests that hadn't been finished of the previous, uh, uh-huh. charity stream that I did to help me out of debt. That so many people uh, helped out to donate for um, and got me out of here. So this is a uh, uh, request for a certain big watch. He donated uh, $363. That's a lot of money. And he asked for me to draw a Lunar Guard Bad Pony comforting a slightly injured male change cleaning change in the Canterlot oh. Dungeons. I forgot to add the chains, so that's what I'm drawing right now. Oh, okay. I'm doing the chains. They're going to be here on the on the ground. And if I pull the picture back, you are going to see that she's definitely hugging it. As the changeling is kind of sad, and I have to draw the injures as well. I have to draw the 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 the, 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 the uh, uh, you know injuries on his face, the wounds on his face. Oh, okay, give me a second. Um, mm. Gala, uh, Gala, uh, how do you spell G A L A X I T E? Galactus, is it right? Okay, Galaxy. Galaxy. He, he asks, "Are we still live?" Yes, yes, we are. Well, if you're if you're listening to us right now, chances are we're still Indeed. live. Full of chaos. No, come on, guys, ask us questions because if you if you really want to know anything, like you want to know how the show is recorded, you want to know how James um, draws, or you want to know how Kitsune writes his story, ask us, man. Or oh, you want to know what yeah, I'm asking? Yeah, now, like, now, now. What the hell is this asking? Ask them now. Why are you nervous? Be nervous-sided. So a, Anywho, little, we've got a, a little bit from, of uh, Charlie self there. About what software and what hardware do we use to record? Uh, um, for <laughs> who's talking right now? We got a ghetto set up, yo. Who's talking? You see, I, I knew it. No one's going to be. Everyone's going to be like, who's <laughs> okay, this guy? Okay, okay. Um, just for, for the record, this voice here you're hearing right now or for the next 25 hours, get used to it, is Norman Sanzo, the host of the MBS show. So... I heard the ghost of the MBS show. Okay, you're in the co-host. So, uh, Dan, <laughs> Dan, say something so people recognize your voice. Uh, I think I said enough, you know. Okay. So, anyway, um, the recording software that I use... Okay, I use a Mac, and the way I record is really ghetto. Um, I use... <laughs> the recording software I use, I use a Mac. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you use to record? I use a computer. <laughs> okay. A, a mic. I use a um, microphone. I, 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 I put... 
I put stuff in the computer and the things come out. Oh, I just press the on big rec- button that says record to FPS show. Beep. No, he's, no, he's, 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 he's running to the button, button on his wall, wall with a red oh. circle and he just <laughs> pushes it and magic yeah. happens. I am getting bullied on my own show. No, but seriously, um, I use GarageBand to record, but before that, I used a uh, application called Soundflower Bed, which uh, which um, manipulates the channels for the audio and I use line in to split the audio and then I use GarageBand to record and to edit I use Audacity Audacity is free you can get it at audacity.com so basically that's how I record and edit the show software Mac method good okay so any other questions? We're going to know about the equipment on the other side. Norman, what mic are you using? You're using the built-in Mac mic, correct? Yes, that's it. Because um, the built-in Mac mic is okay for what I'm doing now. But I wish I could spend a bit more and get a blue ball mic. No, it's um, it's snowball. Sorry, it's the blue snowball mic. Oh yeah, no, no yeah, I was <laughs> blue because you know what? You you want a snowball? You don't want blue balls. That's <laughs> not. That's not something yeah. that anybody. Yeah, I, I would opt for Yeti, but Yeti is a bit expensive. Oh, Yeti's good though. Mm, yeah. Oh yes, it's good. Everything good comes at a big price these days. Mm-hmm. They say the yeah. best things in life are free, but to get there, huh? Man, the taxi ride's gonna cost you. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, but but still, um, it's. One of those situations where I wish I could have it, but I can't. So I work with whatever I have. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, as for my side, I'm using an M Audio Producer USB, bought generously, sold to me for a very good price by an old friend. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hooked up to a laptop that is hooked up to this crap little orange box provided to me by Unify. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but still, still, uh, we try our best to make everything sound nice. Um, I have to thank Sketchy for the episode where we interview Ask Fun because he recorded that episode because I was at a high derp level. And other than that, he was the one that complained to me about my sound quality not being good for the show. And after that, it kind of opened my eyes to reasoning that I need to get a better sound. And, well, if you recently listened, um, I think the last episode... That was bad was with Sketchy and the one that we got better is with Sakura Chita. So go listen to that one and listen to how the quality, the sound quality improved exponentially. Uh, yeah, M-Audio producer USB, Charlie, is, is the USB producer because I used to use a boom mic for this until the boom mic didn't want to be friends with me anymore. <laughs> hey, um, people in James stream, uh, why don't you ask us a question because Kitsune is not the boss of you. <laughs> And um, by the way, it's not yeah, sound it's, power bit, it's sound flower bit. Oh, sound flower bit. If, if okay. And of course, uh, Charlie spelled like, it as uh, sound power bit. It's sound oh. flower bit. Right. Flower bit. Hey, um, mm-hmm. Normie. Mm-hmm. I've got I've got a word. I've got a shout out from uh, Danny J. You remember Danny J? Oh, yeah, Danny. Hey. hey that Danny. horrible that horrible <laughs> British guy who thinks he's not British. Okay, yeah. His best, really. But anyway, he's, he's, he's like really pissed off with the uh, Twitch TV and he would like everyone to know. So he's messaging me personally to tell the world that Danny J is incredibly annoyed with Twitch because... <laughs> Okay, he's he's scolding me right now. On, I'm about to tell Skype. me what my role uh, he's is. Miss, he has to install this little is. software called Pinky Sense before Twitch works. Stupid vocabulary of mine. Okay, what happened? Well, he's, he just wants me to tell you that he's around and he's giving his moral support and I hope he makes a donation. Isn't that right? It's for charity, guys. So everybody, mm, yeah, yes, that before is we true. forget what the point of all this is, it's, uh, it's a charity. We're working for kids. Kids mm. with really horrible diseases and things that they should not be getting at such a young age and you know i joke about stuff a lot but this time i'm absolutely serious everybody should just throw in as much as they can um a few dollars goes a long way to help uh, kids in need and uh, if you donate more than 50 dollars our very own james cork will draw something for you and probably put rarity in it because he's got a thing for rarity is that Word? You're right, James. <laughs> and you can put James through hell and high water because he drew my OC. If you can draw my OC, you can draw anything. <laughs> What's your OC, man? Oh, God, no. Not <laughs> okay, no I'm not gonna, is it one of those OCs that is probably going to be found it's the on kind of, no, it's, it's the kind but... of OC that is the kind of OC that you look at and you just want to rip your head off because you're like, I want to... That's not a 
word? Kill myself if I see it is. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna have a look at this, and I'm, if I make any weird noises, it's because. <laughs> oh god. Oh my. Okay, then this is one. This one's for you. Uh, are you going to talk? Uh, are you going to catalog you? So I think James. Uh, I think sorry. Uh, I think Dan has to go. Of course, I'm going to catalog you. Um, for me, I'm trying to because it's uh, a bus ride away. And what about you, Kitsu? Like, he doesn't to... go. He'll be in the back of my car in the trunk, kicking his way <laughs> well, out. I would like. I would like to go, but I checked out the page, and the page does not actually have like invitationals for writers. They want all the artists. They want all the musicians. They don't want writers, and they don't want people who can talk. So, unfortunately, unless that changes, hint, hint, can't a lot you. <laughs> We're not looking for writers at the moment because, well. But there's no re- there's no real need for them just yet. But oh, oh you don't see, have something. Oh, you see, you see, you see the kind of stuff that we writers get. Yeah, when we can't we can't be expecting to cater to everyone. We can't be putting allocation slots for animators, writers, singers, singer songwriters, and we have people that have come to us with all sorts of different things. We told you if you want to arrange something with us, there's an email to get to it. Are you actually in charge of the thing, or or are you um actually? I'm, I'm in the sure. committee. Oh. I gave the awesome keynote. Oh, indeed. So then, uh, Pimpout, Cantalot, you. Oh, yes. So uh, we started our crowdfunding just a couple of days ago. You can go on to fund.cantalotuniversity.com. you find it in the show notes. And uh, that's where you can go to start pledging your donations towards Cantalot University. So, yep, how awesome Cantalot U de- is depends on you. And we have a stretch goal that has been officially announced. Yes, we are going to be bringing Ashley Ball down if we hit the stretch goal. That's actually an incredible guess. Then, but... Mind yeah. telling us what is Cantalot U because people are not really people don't really know what is Cantalot U. Well, Cantalot University is going to be Singapore's first My Little Pony convention, and it'll be from the twenty first to the twenty second of June, twenty fourteen. Completely child friendly, everything you've always wanted in a brony convention now in sunny Singapore. So yeah, if you're in the ASEAN region, it's cheaper than going anywhere beyond this region. So if you want to have a great time and spend time with your brony friends. Candlelight University is the place to be in 2014. Once again, 21st to the 22nd of June. I'm excited. Hey, I'm, de- I'm definitely going to be there in, in, any, in any capacity. I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah, so it's basically um, Singapore's first uh, pony convention. Yay. It's going to be our first, so we're going we're gonna to party like it's 1999. But anyway, James, nice looking drawing there. Thank you. By the way, I fell silent, and I think I should be quiet because the delay kills any sort of discussion or conversation that I could have with you guys. Really? Is it um, delay again? No, yeah, because whenever I start talking, I start getting cut off. So Why? it's impossible good. for me to catch up with you guys because you're you, you are all well synced up, but I live far away from you, so the delay is it, it, it's for me impossible to like intervene or. Uh, start talking because when I start talking somebody else starts talking over me I'm sorry about that James it's not your fault let, let's talk to James for a while let, let, let James shine because the drawing that you're drawing right now is really awesome I shine enough Norman please do interlude you that convention seems to be important well that's Dan's thing if he wants to pimp it out he should pimp it out oh right? well, I, oh, well there's, there's some questions there's, in the there's chat plenty as well. of time for uh, can a lot of you it's basically just a convention but it's the first big convention to take place uh, on our side of the world, which is the, the Asian Asia region. Uh, um, I Asia should correct region. you there. It's actually third. Nope, it's the first that matters. <laughs> no, the Philippines Ponycon does matter. No, no, no. Then, they then, they then, will help. Yes, then, the thing is, uh, Kitsune says the first that matters to him, so whatever convention doesn't well, really matter Well, it's geographically at all. related. I mean, people in the Philippines won't agree with you on that, and we're not going to be selfish to say that it's just, of course, only for Singaporeans. It's for everyone. No, you of know, anyone. course It doesn't anyway, matter if there's whatever. states in Europe, you can come. James, you're invited as well. Oh, I invited a couple of my US friends. Can you, pay my, can you pay my accommodation on my trip over there, because otherwise I might not be able to go. Well, Daniel, there's someone in the chat now who's asking when and where is it? So I think you can field this question. Oh, uh, okay. So um, first of all, we got one earlier from Charlie MBS. What's my committee role? I'm the media relations manager. The whole event is going to be a success. Of course, it's going to be a success. But whether it's going to be an extreme awesome success or just a success, that depends on you guys because we need money for it. And we have our perks all lined up there. There are perks ranging from just $1 all the way up to $550 Singapore dollars. So go and check it out. 
And uh, when and where is it? It's going to be in Singapore. We haven't announced the fine venue just yet, but we'll be doing it very, very soon. So stick around for that. And I mean, Singapore is so tiny. If we announce it to be on the edge of Singapore, it's still within reach. And uh, yeah, even people from the North Pole. Yep, you're invited. It's from the 21st to the 22nd of June, 2014. Awesome, awesome. I'll try and make time. James, Galaxy wants to know, uh, who's the bad pony in the art? Oh, that's a, a no C bad pony. It's no one in particular. That's why I was asking for different color scheme. In the description of the request, it says, a mere lunar guard bad pony. So huh. I drew a generic looking uh, mare lunar bat uh, pony. That's that's it. And that's what she is. But I wanted to make her unique. That's why we're going to go with a very different color scheme. She's going to be... Uh, I'm not going to tell the colors yet. But that's why I was asking the people, Hey, guys, give me colors. I need the colors because all the bad ponies that I see are gray with blue hair. Can Jean, you please Jean, help out here? James, I have an interesting theory on this. Do you think that because of... Uh, the bad ponies, they live in the dark. They have more uh, a darker tone to them instead of a lighter tone. Like how If you live well, in the dark, you're supposed to be completely bright. No, that's, a, that. that's right. I mean, when you live in the dark, you have no... Uh, you didn't receive any sunlight, so your skin is going to be very pale. It's mm. actually the, quite, the complete opposite. Um, it's not that. Unless, it's, not, unless it's natural camouflage or it's hair growing on your body. So that maybe that's why the bad ponies are uh, dark, dark coated. Yeah, maybe. Well, I was thinking sure. it's because I'm pulling they live things in the out of my right? ear right now. I'm making things up. I'm not making any sense. Same here, man. Like, I, no, do I, do I, remember that they did say that the bad ponies were Luna's god in her castle in the uh, mountain cave or something like that. So maybe they just stay out of the light and they're, they they evolve like those you know albino cave fish. <laughs> That's how M.A. Larson portrayed it in his script. In, in the script for Luna Eclipsed, the bad ponies that carry Luna to, uh, to Nightmare Night, uh, to Ponyville, they are, uh, they are an actual species. People were asking if it's a costume or if it's a spell. No, they are actually like that. Just, and he explained that they come from, the, uh, from Luna's palace. And uh, they are there like the, the, the royal guards are in Celestia's palace. Well, they've evolved well, to see in the dark... They like the you dark. Don't need, they embrace the dark. For starters, you don't need electricity. You have candles. Also, yeah, you have a you you have a giant hydroelectric pre, uh, dam right next to Ponyville. Yeah, you still so, need to pay the bill for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Well, you need to power. Comes on like a thousand hamster wheels in the electricity station. <laughs> Well, you know, oh you know, you need to you need to power uh, you need uh, to power up the, those sewing machines and computers and uh, arcade machines and bakery uh, ailments and ki- uh, kitchen kitchen uh, appliances and all that. You need electricity to that. That's why the the hydroelectric dam is there for. Um, However, I and people people wonder, hey, what about Twilight? She uses candles and like uh, normal candlelight uh, to work in her library. She doesn't have any electricity. Well, when I was yeah. in fine arts, when I was in art school, I met a guy who uh, he wrote with a quill and ink, and he had candles in his house. He didn't have electricity, and he went to school with a bob uh, with a bowling hat and an umbrella. The guy lived literally in the 1920s. It was very interesting to talk to. And he was, he was really humble. You'd expect he'd be the most pretentious douchebag ever, but he was really easy to talk to and very friendly. He just really enjoyed that kind of lifestyle. Really, you know? Which yes. Is, I think that's fair. Yeah, it's fair for people to like, you know, live like that. It's a bit weird probably for us in our context, but... Yeah, uh, you'd expect- you expect the guy to be like, oh, I only watch Las Von Trier movies and I only read Nietzsche books. No, no, he actually he liked uh, he liked very uh, very raunchy Spanish comic books. <laughs> he was <laughs> awesome. I love talking with that guy. Wonder what happened to him. Well, he's probably still living in the twenties. <laughs> no, uh, he may be TV. happy. He doesn't have to pay any bills. I, I, I don't think you have to pay bills. Oh, candles aren't free apple. either, bro. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> like, mixes, he mixes his own candles. Like, he just steals a pig and balls it down. And <laughs> But, like, 
I don't know if that applies to Twilight because Twilight's definitely not that kind of you know person. Uh, well, Pony to like be humble at all. <laughs> I'm thinking more on the Twilight from All's Well That Ends Well that is writing on a on a paper. She's writing on a scroll with a uh, with uh, with a quill. Uh, s- uh, uh, only the candlelight lights the the library. Also, what Ka- what Karen is saying? Yeah, she has a giant laboratory with a computer stuff in her basement, uh, as we saw in Feeling Pinky King. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's why you need the pa- the the hydroelectric dam for. You need to power that up with electricity. True, true. You see, I think I think way I see it, right, and this is my new head canon that I'm just making up right now. But um, the library was in place, and Celestia built it long before Twilight actually made it down to Ponyville. So basically, you know, Celestia just told her, "You can live in there, but don't you dare touch the fixings." <laughs> I have a head. Ca- I have a head canon for uh, for Twilight's library. I think I know who it belonged to. Oh, who? It belonged to Discord. <laughs> Really now? Really? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Just think, think about this, you know. I think James has a point. Who the hell builds a library in a tree? <laughs> um, yeah. Ponies. Who, who, <laughs> the, who the hell builds a castle on the edge of a cliff? That's the stupidest place to put a castle. Uh, well, there's a castle on the edge of a cliff in Malaysia. It's called Fraser's Hill. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you see, uh, I, I would point out, I would the, point out the point that it's Scotland Malaysian, as well. but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also in Scotland. Uh, dumb Malaysian said. architects. But you know what? It, I think the stream is going uh, slow now. So I, I think the MBS show could well end now because we're... Anyway, guys, that was episode 87. Um, shout outs. I'm going to give my first shout out to James. Thank you, James. You, you've you been an awesome guy uh, helping me with the stream and stuff. And... Uh, g- <laughs> This is just you better not pay seriously. me for this. This is this is. <laughs> you, no, I'm getting something out of you. Out of you. Of uh, I'm uh, going to make uh, you play uh, ET for the Atari 2600 oh, in the God. game stream. Yeah, that was a yes. big game. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're going to finish it. Oh God, I'm gonna try. And thank you, Kitsune. <laughs> thank you for coming on and uh, playing games with me later on. No problem, man. Always glad to be here. And you, me, play game after this. Uh, That's right. Daniel. You're on. Daniel, um, do you have Left 4 Dead 2? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, you, me, Left 4 Dead 2 after this. And okay. thank you. Thank you for coming on. No problem. And um, Daniel, what about you? Shout outs. Uh, first of all, shout out to all of you in the chat on both Twitch TV and live stream on James Cork channel. Thank you very much for tuning in and yep, enjoy the show while we rage quit and many, many more games for the time to come after this. To James Clark, thank you for being awesome. To Kitsune, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, Norman, thanks for having me on today. No problem, man. You're always on because this is a weekly show. If you're not on, there's something wrong. Oh yeah, there was, some, there was something wrong with me a few weeks ago, yeah. Oh. Okay, um, Kitsune, what are you saying? Oh, there's, there's actually a nice uh, little guy uh, for James Cork. And he oh, wants God. to know... Yes. What is the art guy's deviant art? I like his art, smiley face. I'm the art guy. <laughs> I've been promoted to art guy. I went from that guy to art guy. One day James I'm going to get to that art, art guy. guy. Now, yeah, so, you are 200 uh, experience everywhere. points uh, away from becoming art dude. So I'm gonna it's, it's I'm gonna pimp him out guy. because I like I like uh, I like art guy a lot. But if you if you want to see art guy's stuff and his uh, personal shrine to rarity, <laughs> and I I really am not. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 be careful! Do not leave <laughs> my Tumblr without a warn. Yeah, I think you I have Virgin to warn people. I, I am gonna give him. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, Tumblr. Be careful. <gasps> the Tumblr is very not safe for work. Careful. Mm, very. Yeah, he, runs, uh, he runs a, a little uh, ask block called Ask uh, Movie, Movie Slate, Slate. and uh, yes. she's she's pretty cute and she's pretty cool. And <laughs> along the links to the right of that, you have a, a whole bunch of other uh, mini tumblers that he does. Uh, for example, the mm, where is that? Where where is your rarity? Uh? No, my okay, okay. The mini tumblers, all that. If you go to my mod block. That is my mod block, and that is not safe for work. However, if you go into my mod block and you search for Raritopia, that is absolutely safe for work. It doesn't have any uh, Rule 34 in it, because I don't re-block Rarity Rule 34. Okie dokie dokie then. So, um... I think. Maybe when I am too clouded, I might re-block something, but I don't remember. Oh, man, Gizune, that was just cold. Oh... Uh. 
James. Um, what the shout outs. Who to? Who do I shout out to? I give a shout out to uh, all of you guys for having me here because. I mean, if I don't, if I don't thank you for having me on your show, what the hell? I will be an ungrateful jackass, and I don't want to be one. Uh, I want uh, to give a shout out awesome. to Sketchy, uh, who's awesome, uh, who's going to be on the stream in a couple of minutes, mm-hmm. and I want to give a shout out to my good old friend Niffle on the chat, Nick, in that he is great. Uh, he's my moral compass and the guy who cheers me up every time I connect on the computer. Awesome, and Kitsune. What about you? You see, these these kind of questions really take me by surprise because I don't know anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, let's end this. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow@gmail.com. And if you'd like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at mbsshow.com, Daniel at mbsshow.com, Charlie at mbsshow.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. You can reach the show's account at at the MBS show Sweetie Bot will interact with you talk with you and we'll pimp out stuff about the show and also complain about editing and also you can follow me at Norman Sanzo I will take pictures of food kitties my nephew he's really cute and I will tweet about anything that tickles my fancy and what about you Dan? Oh, well, you can follow me at S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E, that's St. Pinky on Twitter. And um, no, I don't tweet much anymore, but if you tweet me, I'll reply back. And if you're having a bad day, tweet me. I'll convince you that I'm having a worse day. <laughs> Yay, worst day competition. It's uh, not competition, it's comfort. So what about you, James? Do you have the Twitters? Uh, yeah, I have the Twitter at, at James Cork. Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com and you can follow my blog and movie slate at uh, askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome. And Kitsu, what about you? Any um, Twitters or any place they can reach you? No, you know, I'm a social monster, so well, of the of the bad kind, which means that I stay away from it really. But uh, the only place that you can really get me uh, is my account on filmfiction.net. So just uh, go right on to filmfiction.net and do a search for Kitsune Risu. That's my username, and you'll find me and a whole bunch of my interesting stories. So you know, come and check me out. Give me a read. Uh, leave a comment. Send me a message. I will always reply. Awesome, awesome. So anyway, guys, we'll see you guys next week. And for people in the stream, I'll see you after this. Uh, Time for me to suffer 25 hour gaming. See ya! (laughs) 